From this video, you're going to be learning the following typical themes of the Karo Khan. How to play the Tartak over Pawn structure, how to exploit suboptimal play in the exchange variation, and perhaps one of the most requested topics is how to deal with the super common bishop d3 move in the advanced variation. And we do get a black pieces and against e4 we're going to be going for the uh, Karo Khan, go c6, play d5 and see what our opponent will uh, will play let's go for knight c3 which is the so-called classical line we're gonna be taking on uh on e4 and i think i'm gonna be sticking to this uh pattern of going for the tata of variation even though as i was saying uh bishop f5 is like the main line perfectly playable and i also kind of like the idea of going 97 for the carpo variation i think it's fine with like precise play on the engine and I really like it because it's sort of out of fashion and yeah, I generally am a fan of this type of openings that are not super mainstream. So um, yeah, anyways, just going to be playing the knight of 6 move, which I think it's perhaps um, maybe the most popular nowadays. Uh, it's been given by Erwin Lamy in his uh, lifetime repertoire on the Karo Khan and uh, I've played this a lot of times already. I like some new ideas in it one of the key ideas is that you play h7 h5 in uh one of the lines where white can go for the long castle i'll actually try to show you in the analysis step after the game if i don't forget and the yeah, critical move is to take um there are also players going knight g3 or knight g5 you're gonna run into them quite a lot i think knight g3 is like the most common sideline where i think g6 is like simplest way to play after this though, uh, yeah, taking with the G pawn is quite interesting as well, but I think this is best, just keeping a solid situation on the king side. And uh, yeah, like the main line in this position is um, yeah, to play c3. This is sort of the most precise answer with the idea to play bishop d3, uh, queen c2, knight e2. Ooh, I can't draw any goddamn arrows. So like queen c2, knight e2, and then... Uh, as black you're gonna be dealing with that by playing h5 that is sort of the new new way of dealing with it but uh, on knight f3 i think this is like very common gonna be playing uh, bishop to d6 and then just castling short and we have to like develop this bishop according to what white does with his light squared bishop because if he goes to e2 then we can like postpone development of this guy even like e6 or f5 should be preferred and if he develops to like other than e2 to like let's say d3 or c4 it's like really annoying for him to pin the knight so that is pretty much how you should be uh, seeing these positions so put in place bishop to c4 in this position and if you remember what i was saying earlier uh yeah whenever they don't play bishop e2 then bishop g4 is a great move in this line just being super annoying for your opponent and the idea is not to actually trade the knight but to keep the tension with like bishop to h5 whenever they play uh, h3 and most of your mm, opponents i think will play g4 just overextending overextending their king side like crazy and yeah just get bishop g6 king is gonna be like pretty soft and i think black is getting very good counter play in general it's still like interesting though because he may be playing for like long castle the way he's doing it so like in some position people are still overextending like this even with the short castle they still play g4 which is like pretty funny but okay with long castle it makes a bit more sense let's say but okay still can play like knight b6 very interesting play could start b5 i think i like b5 with the idea that on bishop b3 you can play knight b6 and then ideas to play a5 a4 knight c4 knight d5 uh yeah like this kind of stuff also, like bishop b3, there's an interesting line of bishop e4. He has only move queen e2 uh, to defend on bishop d3. I think uh, you can trade bishops. It's interesting. I think maybe we just play knight b6 because after the bishop trade, uh, we'll have a threat of going knight c4. Uh, perhaps could have traded as well. I think both moves were fine. For knight b6 is a bit better, but maybe it doesn't really matter. Okay, opponent taking some time. Here he goes h4, which I think is like the uh most natural move am i gonna go knight c4 allowing bishop takes pawn takes h5 and then bishop e4 he's gonna have like either rook h3 queen e2 i think that's like 
perhaps a bit tricky and I think it's just simplest to take and then play like rook 8 or knight d5, something, something like this. I think it's pretty useful. In case of g5, probably just like knight d5. And yeah, maybe it was that my timing was like a bit off with this rook e8 move. But I think it should be good. I don't think he's getting like huge attack. And like if he plays rook dg1, I think we're ready to just go f5, sacrificing that pawn because we can take on e3. If you think about it, the only issue with like this pawn box is if all the pieces are getting traded off and we have a king and pawn end game where we have four pawns on this side that are equal to these three pawns and white will have a pawn majority on the queen side with these four against uh whoops with this four against three so i will pretty much have an instant win in like the king and pawn end games but as long as you don't get into that keep rooks on the board or something and games should be very playable and uh yeah when you get into this super double -A situations i think um, black has very good chances of counterplay so after pawn takes on f6 i think we just take it with a queen and the idea is to play like knight f4 next or perhaps even bishop f4 okay so first of all this guy is hanging let's see how he deals with it bishop g5 this check is actually very playable could go queen g6 and also go for the end game. Do you want to keep like queens on? I think just the end games are fine. As I was like saying many times during this series, um, as a Karo camp player, this should be like your <laughs> cup of tea, just trading queens all over. Which is like having such a solid pawn structure. I mean, just having really, really smooth pawns, like two islands. Okay, we're going to be taking this way. Having two islands of pawns and then he's got like this weak pawns on like weak isolated pawns on the uh, king side. So I think we should be a little bit better from that perspective. Rookie 2 is also kind of looming. He does go h5 with the idea to take and then double up my pawns. So uh, yeah, I I think we just take that and like after rook takes. He has ideas to like even double up and try to play for some kind of rook a8. But I think it's like really nice to start with f6 and we are not only creating a luft but also controlling this kind of important square on e5 and um, yeah I think king will be quite safely placed on f7, could swing the rook over the h file, could look for opportunities to play rook e2 but not immediately because he has this type of ideas. So just king f7 I think is really nice here and then either rook e2 or rook h8 will be played rook e4 also candidate uh bishop f4 sometimes a move but maybe not just yet as a caro player i would admit i like trading everything off and bringing about my pawn structure that is actually like a very solid strategy and very easy to implement i think so opponent plays rook g1 i think he's having a threat of playing rook h7 and just trying to win this so i think we're gonna try to trade off a pair of rooks eliminating that uh, eliminating that potential danger of him activating on the seventh rank and attacking this pawn and yeah he will pretty much have no threats after the rook trades and we will have a weak pawn on f2 that we can attack my knight is like a little bit more active than this one which is actually uh restricted by this really nice pawn on f6 just controlling both squares that that knight can go to and i think we should be having a slightly better position we're really entering that technical phase that all the karakam players uh love we do see rook e1 but now we can actually activate with the rook hitting the knight the knight has to probably drop back since i don't see a way for opponent to defend it and after let's say knight g1 we can even pin him even go like rook h2 hitting this pawn uh, it wouldn't be completely out of the ordinary to play rook h4 and hit this pawn and uh, we see knight g1 retreating kind of only move as i was saying and this is interesting but he has c3 so i don't think we really achieve that much so i'm just gonna play rook h2 hitting the pawn probably has to play like rook f1 but then i think we just um, start pushing because we are the ones having a minority on this side now 
with this pawn on f2. So just pretty much just push like g5, g4. Uh, I just try to go super aggro and okay, just plays f3. Still, the knight is like incredibly passive. Maybe bishop g3. Uh, yeah, with a pretty annoying threat. Like if he plays rook e2, we can pin the knight and I think we're winning the piece with bishop h2. So he has to play like rook f1. Okay, he plays that, but I think now he's just uh, dead lost. Even this is like such a funny motive. Watch this, guys. Bishop f2, rook takes, and he's just running into checkmate. Bishop h2 was winning as well, but just because I'm trying to be fancy, I played bishop f2. It wins absolutely nothing compared to bishop h2, but I think it's kind of nice. And I think it was kind of a kind of a smooth transition, I would say, with like the queen trade and like so on. Or like rook trades and yeah, we just like win the bishop now. We're still like playing this on for a bit. Um, yeah, just like rook somewhere. I guess just, uh, you generally just play like there as far as you can. I'm going to be using this square, maybe like knight f4. That was kind of dumb. Should have used the h file. I made a dumb move, but okay, I mean, it's completely winning. It doesn't really matter at this point. Just like activate the king, get it like all the way to f4. Really nice now blocking his idea. He was trying to push c4, but now I can go for the ampassant. And yeah, yep, yep, yep. I think can use the rook now. Mm -hmm. Take another pawn. Maybe we go a bit passive now, just defending the, the pawn. Can we bring the king next. Gives pretty much like winning itself. Yeah, just taking off for the fork. Your opponent's spotting the fork, but now c2. Knight d5, knight b4, and then rook a1. Yeah, he does resign. Uh, yeah, I think pretty clean game. Okay, so we get the black pieces. Opponent opens up with e4, meaning that we're gonna be going for the rock solid Karukhan. And let's see, I'm expecting them to generally take on d5. But I've also ran into some like e5 moves recently. Okay, we do see the exchange uh, variation this time. And we're just going to be taking, going to be playing like knight c6. And uh, I'm just generally expecting to get an improved version uh, of this setup. Because normally how white really wants to play this. Well, with like this move orders... The only way to like play for an advantage is by going knight e5 in this position or like d4 knight c6 and then knight e5 um, and other than that they normally instead of knight f3 play d4 d5 take and then white plays like bishop d3 c3 and they rush with like bishop f4 uh getting into a london system but um yeah this way is just uh, a bit odd with the bishop on e3 the bishop pretty much always develops to like g4 in its structures. Gonna be playing e6 and then, uh, yeah. Depending on where he develops the knight, like when this knight goes on c3, like this, uh, I think you just play knight f6 and then either bishop d6 or bishop e7 and then castle. But when this knight actually goes on to d2, which looks to be the case here, I really like going like bishop d6, queen c7, just trying to keep an eye on that diagonal and then. We do have some options of playing with knight g to e7, even though um, in, real in reality you could perhaps play knight f6, castle short against anything and not bother with it. But, uh, and yeah, like be having equal positions, but like sometimes it's just might be very slightly better to play this way than I'm saying, so. Just trying to provide with like a pretty good idea of what options you have overall and yeah, you pretty much uh, choose for yourself. So queen a4 is obviously just hitting this pawn. Um, rook c8 is a move, but then pawn on a7 is kind of undefended. That doesn't really bother me that much, but I think you can perhaps play knight e5 first. So yeah, I could also develop with the knight on e7. It's a question whether I want my knight on f6 or on e7. Uh, because if I play knight e7, sure, I'm like defending the pawn in the short run, but maybe the knight could be a little misplaced there compared to like what it would have been on f6 so for this reason i could play queen d7 
and then just try to get like the knight to f6 but i think actually just playing knight e7 in this position is like perfectly fine because i'm really expecting him to play some kind of knight e5 sooner or later and then we can actually take it and when he takes it w will like no longer come up with a tempo which would have been the case with the knight being on f6 if that makes any sense so he goes extreme i think we have the option of taking i like a bit better though to keep the bishop uh it doesn't really make much sense to place it on like h5 since the knight is well prepared i mean <laughs> since the knight is well defended but i think f5 works just fine with ideas to uh, activate maybe using the d3 square and i think now it's actually coming really nicely stopping white's king from castling he can castle this side though uh it's like a pretty funny situation because uh, yeah i think even Korchino at some point asked the arbiter if he can castle along with the bishop being like there because it's like rook is going through bishop's range and it's like kind of confusing if you think about it uh about the rules like it's just like very sort of weird situation but uh yeah i mean as long as the king doesn't go through the check obviously you can castle <laughs> so i think that's like a funny thing um uh, that i just wanted to to mention not sure if like the question story is actually legit i mean i've heard it somewhere i don't really remember where but i do remember asking myself in this situation he's actually casting a legal move uh it's funny because like nobody really talks about this so uh okay why just goes knight e5 activating hearing the bishop and the pawn uh we could just play bishop b5 dodging that threat could just take uh on e5 and then maybe try to open up the position with uh f6 that looks like pretty interesting um maybe bishop b5 followed by f6 is even better getting rid of the knight so um, yeah, I mean, why would you like give up the bishop here for no reason when you can actually just win a tempo with f6, keep both bishops, and uh, have a very good position? So maybe because, uh, yeah, if he plays knight f3 after f6, uh, we can no longer get our bishop into d3, but now I came up with a new idea, like going c5. He can't take us, then we take the knight. And on c5, I don't think c4 is like a great move because we can simply take. So I think just going c5 could perhaps be a good idea. Also sort of getting rid of the kind of backward pawn. It's not really like a backward pawn. Maybe just going f6 and native 3 e5 is better. I think we're just going to go for that because it's like more <clears throat> towards the center. And I think it just has way more impact to the game than this c5 push would have had, even though... I think he was sort of fine. I think just advancing in the center is definitely way more beneficial in this particular case. Because he just looks to me like his king is kind of weak. He's sort of struggling to castle. Okay, he has played C4. I was actually like lagging a bit. I think it's maybe because of the stream. That is, anyways, like kind of odd. Um, but my opponent ended up playing C4 in this position. So he's going for the intermezzo. He's not playing games anymore. Uh, and yeah, just gonna try to uh, s calculate some concrete lines, I guess. Like taking, he takes my bishop. Uh, I take on d4. He's kind of forced to take. I can either push c5 or e5 and then d4. It's like a funny line after c5, bishop e3, d4. To me, it looks like his bishop's almost getting trapped. So I think he can go for that. The other thing he has is maybe taking with a pawn. Okay, so he takes there. Uh, I wanted to take. Bishop takes, and then I was really thinking to go maybe like c5. Perhaps he can take with a bishop still. So I think maybe e5 is better. Just pushing in the center, and again, it looks like I should be just better because his king is like still in the center, and we have managed to get some kind of initiative going. Just trying to evaluate the position after bishop e3, d4, bishop g5, pinning my knight. It's not like that clear to me what is going on, who's better, and why. Maybe on bishop e3, we could perhaps simply like <laughs> grab the pawn and say that, well, we're just up a pawn and play that position. I think that's actually cleanest approach. Since like d4, 
you're giving away some squares like e4 and c4 and he manages manages to like paint ourselves i don't necessarily love that idea so on bishop e3 i think even though maybe i thought c5 is interesting just like taking the pawn should be simplest approach he goes to like c5 which is um not great because it's also like from a strategical perspective if we trade bishops then we could potentially get a knight into like f4 but i think just taking the pawn on b5 is um yeah better as i was saying we're just like up a pawn additionally rook c8 is like a pretty annoying move to deal with and we do have the same ideas that i was mentioning regarding knight g6 uh heading towards f4 and opponent will have a pretty hard time dealing with that knight so yeah a lot of pressure on the fight as well really expecting some kind of short castle but uh okay he plays knight b3 maybe queen c5 ideas uh just gonna be playing rook c8 activating the rook while also gaining a tempo and on queen e2 he's hitting the pawn uh it's interesting to play rook c4 with this idea definitely many interesting moves could also just ignore that pawn play knight g6 knight f4 yeah i think we're just ignoring the pawn at this point just trying to prioritize uh yeah activity like maybe even just go rook c2 now with the idea that um well threatening to take on f2 and i'm guessing he'll probably castle at this point and play knight f4 the knight is activating hitting the pawn and on king g2 i think we might be having this deadly queen h6 move he still has rook h1 but i really feel like it should be some kind of yeah just mating tactic so on king h2 uh wait i was saying king g2 that was actually a an illegal move but uh on king h2 we can just go there and he has simply no way in defending the uh h3 pawn and he's going for the <laughs> knight just short king march but uh yeah it was obviously running into a mate in one on uh, h3 so uh, overall i think it was a pretty was a pretty clean game in the Karokan. Hey everyone, I wanted to apologize in advance for the freezing camera that you will notice in the next game. Uh, the audio is like completely fine. I did my best uh, editing that. And uh, I just thought I'd throw that game in because it felt uh, quite instructive. So I hope that's like not too bad to watch and uh, you will still enjoy the video. We do get a game. Opponent opens up with uh, e4 and we're going to be playing the Karokan. Can actually, can we play a game like this guys? I don't have a scene, but <laughs> this would be fun playing 3D. Okay, I'm gonna be making a move just so I don't time out. Uh, okay, so against e5, going for the advanced variation, we're gonna be playing for the yeah simple line, just going bishop to f5, and I'm really expecting a lot of these players to either go bishop d3. Uh, immediately or play knight f3 and then after e6 i'm really expecting them to go like bishop to d3 even though bishop e2 is the uh, main line in the position i think this is like very common and this is really nice to see because black has a very easy time playing this type of caro cans especially after like c5 uh, we can just play it immediately no need to be afraid of mm, queen d7 since you can simply Offer queen trade or play knight d7, gambiting the pawn. That is also like super interesting. And now basically we just got into uh, French defense structure where we managed to trade off the bad bishop. And uh, yeah, we have many ideas. Um, actually, I could have considered developing this knight to d7 as well. Point being that uh, I could have tried to bring the other one to c6. But uh, yeah, I think knight c6 is like super standard still. Uh, I'm wondering whether it makes sense to play queen b6, hitting the pawn. I think it could be a move. I'm just going to start with it. So we play queen b6. I think it's kind of awkward for white to defend now. That is mainly why I played this move. And I think queen e2 is sort of best, but... Then we can perhaps just play knight h6 with the idea to bring the knight towards f5. 
I don't really like Windy 2 because it's sort of blocking Knight Square. And also I wasn't sure about B3 because uh, yeah, it felt like I can take and then use the B4 square. Uh, okay, just gonna be taking and going for the check. I think that is the simple play. Takes with a pawn, which I was expecting. We're going for the check. And I'm expecting some kind of Perhaps knight d2, even though I think knight c3 is playable, he does go king e2, which is actually uh, interesting. I mean, honestly, it's kind of typical in these lines to play king f1, not king e2. But, yeah, I mean, the only thing that we have to watch out for is something like a3, because then we have to just drop back the bishop, so do not play knight e7 in this position. I think that would be a terrible mistake because of a3 and then the bishop's getting trapped. Like a5 is only square and he has b4. So we're gonna be just playing knight h6, a3, bishop e7, and yeah, ideas to cast a shot. Uh, okay, he does go for bishop takes. Okay, we see a3 as expected and I'm wondering maybe we go all the way to f8 and then to like g7 with the idea to break with f6. That's a little bit of a sophisticated idea though. Just playing bishop e7. And it's not actually a very easy position to play. Like you'd, you'd expect to be much better when the king is on e2, but it's actually... Uh, I don't think it's like bad at all for white because there's like no way for me to immediately punish it and yeah I think we just need to keep it simple now and castle even though you know my king looks a bit naked because I don't have this pawn on g7 could hide on h8 in some lines could also break with f6 so I think he should play knight c3 that's probably why he played b4 in the first place because if he was playing knight c3 now i could have taken on b3 so you're really expecting him to develop the knight on the natural square and then he's got ideas of jumping on the c5 square i'm just wondering whether we can actually break with f6 in the meantime yeah knight c3 i think we've got to create some play just gonna go for that probably meeting knight a4 with Queen d8, maybe. If he plays knight c5, we just take it. Things I don't like the queen to stay on c7, because then he can perhaps play rook c1. b5 will be a threat. I think the queen on c7 could be slightly misplaced, so just gonna go all the way to d8. Maybe a6 is also fine, trying to force the end game, but I think queen d8 is best here. Play something like rook f5. Increasing the pressure over the e5 pawn. Also, we have some interesting uh, ideas to like sack the exchange in that line. Okay, when the, whenever the knight lands on c5, pretty much we just uh, trade it with a bishop, and we're gonna be taking on e5 on the next move, pretty much no matter what. And after de, we'll have okay. So after de, we'll have a very interesting idea like rook f3. And the only move would be to take with a pawn in order to not get forked. But okay, I mean, even knight e5 there looks very, very interesting. Uh, but okay, probably should have just gone rook f5 in that position. He takes with a knight. But yeah, I think we should probably just take. Trying to see whether queen h4 makes any sense or not. Like hitting f2, hitting d4 as well. Yeah, maybe that's actually like a good move. I like queen h4 and what is he even playing? Yeah, I think we go queen h4. A lot of threats. Could go knight f3 back, but maybe then we sack the exchange. He can trade queens, but he's gonna lose d4 pawn in the end, yeah. You're gonna see exactly what I meant. Take like this. It's not like super obvious yet, but on king d3 we have a strong uh, knight b3 move. So I'm quite happy about that. I don't really see another appealing square for the king. Like d3, I think it's 
best but it just runs into knight b3 and we win another pawn with check it looks like because he's also not able to like defend the pawn with the rook because then we can just like take it so yeah i think opponent is in trouble now and that king e2 move which looked bad he ended up not being so terrible okay i think he'll try like king d4 but probably we just play b6 and support the knight on king e3 mm, wondering whether it makes any sense to lure the king with d4 because if you play like rook f5 he's got f4 and it still doesn't look easy to like actually win this he also has a threat against the pawn I think honestly should we should probably defend the pawn but I'm just gonna go rook d8 with the idea to just uh, go all in with uh, d4 d3 yeah just go for the super aggressive play he's gotta like sort of stay with the king on the e file like king d2 because on king d2 we win f2 this is pretty much what uh, made me go for this and then maybe on like king e2, I think I've seen a I've seen a good move. Maybe we've got like knight e4. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good move. But it looked good like hitting this and also knight c3. Maybe he has rook f1. Maybe I was supposed to just play d3 like I initially wanted. But it felt like throwing this one in could be potentially beneficial. Okay, so he takes, but now we can simply go for the fork, so that is just uh, ending the game on the spot. I think I was, like, better anyways. It was just that the position was still a little bit unclear. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video, and if you're looking for more content, make sure to check out uh, some of the previous episodes from the same series.